to be joined now by Arizona head coach Tommy Lloyd and student athletes Benedict Matherin and Azulis Tubelis. And we'll open it up for questions. Well, I'll start off with a statement. First off, it's great. You guys put TJ, PJ behind this thing there, so I can't see him. He's kind of out of my line of vision right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll go right to questions. If anybody has a question, please raise your hand. Kevin? Up front, we'll start. Kevin Dan of Pac-12 Networks. Coach, welcome to the conference. What has the transition been like for you going from being a lead assistant to being the head coach? And what has practice been like for you as the head coach? Well, well the transition's been great. And, you know, I'm, I'm thankful, you know, having been with, you know, Mark Few at Gonzaga for 22 years. He, you know, he put a lot on my plate and, and really empowered me. And so, you know, it's uh, it's something I feel like I'm ready for. And, uh, you know, I've embraced, you know, going on the journey with these guys. I'm thankful these guys, you know, decided to, to stick with me and, 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 and give this a try. Uh, practice has been good. I mean, we had a really good summer and, uh, you know, even, even late spring, summer, and into the fall. And, um, you know, these guys have been great. I've thrown a lot at them. And uh, I feel like, you know, they're picking up the main concepts well. And, you know, now it's... You know, we're getting soon to the time to get tested, and, and then I'm looking forward to, to seeing w what those test results look like and, and finding areas we can get better. We'll go to Casey in the back left. Casey Jacobson with Pac-12 Network and Fox. Um, this question is for the, the players. So, um, of course, you guys have been asked many times probably the difference between uh, Sean Miller and Coach Lloyd, and we all know that Sean Miller was a really good coach, as is Coach Lloyd, but what is the – the main differences, the, the changes that you've seen as a program in the few weeks that you guys have been practicing? And then specifically for each of you, what is your new role this year going to be and maybe changed as it was to, from a season ago? Um, I feel like, you know, um, we have it, it's two two great coaches. You know, uh, we have Tommy Lloyd on my right, um, who's been at Gonzaga, like you said, for 22 years, coming to Arizona. Um, just a different style of play, you know. He, he brought winning into Arizona, um, such so, so, uh, Samuel so did too. But I think it's uh, it was it's really a different kind of kind of style of play, and uh, it really fits my game well. So I'll say I'm really grateful for that. Uh, this year, I think uh, we'll play in faster pace. Uh, I think uh, Coach Tommy Lloyd. Uh, he likes to win games. He, he comes to practices with smile every day. So I really like it. And uh, personally, for me, I just need to to dominate, to show uh, my uh, physicality. What can I do defensively? Just make stops. And yeah. We'll go to Dan in the back right. Hey, Tommy, welcome to the conference. Thank you. Uh, good to see you. Uh, you know, Gonzaga, you were one of the highest scoring teams in the country. It seemed like year in and year out. Can you give us a little preview if it's going to be opened up a little bit at Arizona? Is it going to be a little different style to play? Do you want to get it out and run a little bit more? Uh, just let us know what you're thinking. Well, I mean, I, I saw a stat in one of those interviews I did today that Arizona led the conference in scoring last year, you know, at 75 points or something a game. And, you know, I mean, listen, I'd love to play in the 90s if possible. Um, you know, but but again, I've never focused just on, like, scoring. For me, it's more about tempo pace, tempo pace to get easy possessions, easy shots. Once we get in the half court, man, half court ball movement, player movement, you know, and then all you're trying to do is you're trying to get the best shot possible. So, I mean, that's going to be the focus. But I just, you know, my core belief is, Playing fast and, and, and getting in transition is one of the best ways to do that. So I think you're going to see a real similar style of play that you know that we had at Gonzaga. We're going to go back to Casey in the back left. Coach Lloyd, I'm curious. Um, you know, 
you've been at Gonzaga for so long. You guys played a national schedule. I mean, you you played almost every program in in the country. Um, but going from the WCC to the Pac-12, what is your preparation for like that? as a coach, was it like, do you do a deep dive on some of the other programs in the Pac-12 or did you keep it mostly trying to get to know your guys and watching film on your current roster? Definitely the latter. I mean, I, I've really focused on us at this point, um, you know, and, and, and we'll get, I mean, once we get to the non-conference season, you know, we'll, you know, obviously we'll be evaluating ourselves constantly and then, you know, we'll be watching what's coming down the pipe and I, I'm really looking forward to the journey. I mean, what it's going to be like to be playing in, in the Pac-12, playing that schedule, you know, where, you know, every game's going to be a battle and, um, you know, I, I think that's going to be a great challenge and, and I'm not going in with any crazy preconceived notions like I have all the answers. I'm just looking forward to experiencing it and then, you know, hopefully, you know, and, and maybe in a year or two, I'll probably be able to give you a more specific answer, but... I'm, I'm, I'm honestly looking forward to the, to the challenge it's going to present. Go to the back right to Eldridge. Coach Lloyd, welcome to the Pac-12. Uh, I'm not going to bring up that y'all was scared to play Washington there for a few years at Gonzaga. Well, I did. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, welcome to the Pac-12. Uh, what do you see as one of the major differences? I mean, when I, when I watched Gonzaga over the years, I think you guys won the league like 20 straight years made it to the tournament 20 straight seasons. I used to joke with some of my buddies and, you know, Gonzaga folks would give me a bad time because I live in Seattle. Now you're in a conference that I think, honestly, more top to bottom is probably a little bit better. But how are you approaching this as a first time? I, I believe this is your first time being a head coach, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so how are you approaching that coming into a conference like the Pac-12, having so much success with in the WCC as an assistant at Gonzaga? Well, I mean, I might have to recalibrate what winning percentage feels good, you know, and, uh, you know, you know, but there were challenges, you know, you, you play at, in the WCC at Gonzaga. I mean, the things that I think that maybe you guys don't realize, you know, we felt like if we lost the game home or away, we lost a seed line in the tournament. You know what I mean? Like there was real repercussions for losing. So we felt like we had to be on every day. And, and so I think it's going to be similar, you know, and, and maybe you don't have to go, you know, whatever, you know, 16 and two in conference to get an at-large bid anymore. So, th so that might be nice, but again, you're right. It's going to be tougher on a night to night basis. And I totally respect that fact. And I'm, I'm looking forward uh, to seeing what that feels like. In the front right to Austin. Hey, how's it going? Uh, Austin Scott with the state press. Um, just kind of for the players, you guys both had really good freshman years. You guys won Pac-12 freshman of the week, um, both of you guys. So just without having a chance to play in either tournament last year, coming into this year, is there almost more hunger to kind of get back to that stage where you were last year or just to even improve even more, just to kind of – get yourselves back in that spotlight and back in those tournaments where you guys frankly kind of deserved to be last year just in terms of overall performance and you know when wins and losses yeah of course uh, we always uh, have to improve uh, somewhere but uh, yeah I just can't to be I can't uh, wait for the tournament and uh, I think uh, we'll play there and uh, I know just looking forward to play there. Oh, uh, for my end, I think um, we're still we're still really hungry from last year. You know, we, we didn't have the chance to play in the March Madness to like do the uh, Pac-12 tournament. Um, you know, I spoke with the guys, me and Azulis, coming in as like leadership, um, telling them how the Pac-12 tournament and the March Madness will help us, everybody on the team. And um, just really excited to go there and, and show 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 the people show the people um, the wrong, you know. Like we have to prove, like we say, prove the the haters. But I really think um, we have a great chance to make it to the March Madness, and we have a great team this year to make it. Coach, without naming names, out on the recruiting trail, have you? butted heads and run into your old buddies back at Gonzaga. Has that been a little weird if so? Yeah, if yeah, for sure. We, we have a little bit. It's been weird. But, you know, I mean, I mean, all these guys you're here with, all these coaches, you're bumping into them on the recruiting trail. And I think, you know, you, you can be professional about it. Um, you know, we, we all have hard jobs to do. And, and, you know, I always tell people, 
you know, recruiting is one of the most humbling things you, you, you can do, you know, at least in my business, because, you know, you, there's a, you don't win all the recruiting battles, right? And, and, and there is no reward for second place. So, you know, I, I think as, as coaches, we generally all have a mutual respect. And, and I know, you know, how those guys are doing it at Gonzaga and they're going about it the right way. So, you know, when you're competing against them, you know, that, that, that's, that's fine. And that's going to happen if, you know, if you're both trying to be, you know, two of the better programs on the West Coast. What's the difference between recruiting a kid to Gonzaga as opposed to recruiting him to Arizona? Um, you know, I, I have honestly haven't approached it too different. You know, I mean, I, I mean, we were recruiting at a really high level at Gonzaga and and selective of the guys who we went after. And um, you know, I've decided to take the same approach at Arizona to start out. And to be honest with you, my first priority was these guys. You know, um, you know, the guys that are already there. I mean, you know, I didn't want to come in and think that oh, I'm gonna clean house and bring in all my own guys, this or that, because, you know, a lot of these things these guys have been through, is there's no fault of their own. So I thought the best thing I could do for the program, for my, myself and for them, was to, to do a great job with them. And, and that's been 100% my focus. And uh, we got a great young nucleus um, that I'm looking forward to growing with over, you know, a couple seasons. And then, you know, we'll sprinkle in some recruits here and there, you know, a, as needed. Go back left to PJ. Uh, PJ Carlissimo, uh, Pac-12 Network, NBA Academy, BWB. Um, ben, both you guys, uh, congratulations on the freshman team last year. But um, Ben, your transition, uh, I mean, seeing you for a couple of years down in Mexico City, uh, you've gotten bigger. Uh, you shot the ball so well uh, last year. How much do you think, like the, your experience this summer, the playing for the U19, how much of that international basketball and playing year-round and playing against, for the most part, older guys in an elite competition, how much did that prepare you uh, for your first seasons uh, at, at Arizona? Um, you know, I think uh, when I go way back then, uh, playing in front of, you know, like different coaches, against different good players, you know, um, having tournaments. I remember in Rhode Island and Atlanta when I saw you for the first time. Um, I just felt like it was pretty good uh, playing in, against good, great players, preparing me for my first uh, season at Arizona. I went with the, with the national team, got to play against uh, different players from different countries, the top, top players. So it just allowed me to see what kind of players I will be playing in the future. Azulis, what did you think coming over? I mean, all the how important basketball is in Lithuania and all you had accomplished already before you got here. What were you expecting, and, and was it different last year, uh, playing your first year in, in the NCAA? It was, yeah. It was uh, different because it's a different uh, type of basketball. Here uh, in the U.S., uh, we run more. We are more uh, physical, so it was really uh, not that hard to adjust for me because I like to play fast and I like to run to score. So it's kind of my type of basketball. But uh, this summer I went back to Lithuania to play with my uh, national team, so I just played my game. I. I just uh, ran the court, and I think uh, it helped uh, my team to win. T, people pigeonhole you a little bit with the recruiting because you've had so much success internationally. But, uh, I mean, it, it's just a lot of people were late to it. We were lucky because we were kind of ahead. Of, we couldn't get local kids. We were ahead of the curve doing it. Um, how important has it been, and how important would you want it to be going forward for uh, Arizona? Well, I mean, I think – you know, it's no secret that I mean, I, I love international recruiting. I love international basketball. And, uh, you know, it's actually more than recruiting. It's really impacted me as a coach. You know, I mean, studying coaches like David Blatt, Pablo Lasso. I mean, you know, that's where I spend a lot of my time, you know, when I watch basketball on my own to learn. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's always going to be a part of what I do. But I also understand at Arizona, you have to have a balance. You know, you're, you know, we have, I think, eight international guys right now. And it's great. I'm, I'm happy we have every one of them. Um, you know, I don't know if we're always going to have an eight to four, or eight to five ratio. You know, I mean, that might flip eventually. And um, but at the end of the day, when it comes to recruiting in this day and age, I think it's just about finding 
the right guy at the right time, whether it's an international guy, a high school kid, a transfer. You know, I, I think you got to be flexible and you got to use all those different pools to, to find the best guys for your teams at that time. And that's how I'm definitely going to approach it. Uh, we're going to go back to Eldridge in the back and then we'll come over to Bruce. Coach Lott, I want to piggyback on that recruiting thing a little bit more. Uh, watching you guys over the years at Gonzaga, you know, you, you guys would get players that I, that I had never heard of before. And bef when they finished, they were, they were first team All-Americans. You know, uh, I remember a guy like Dan Dickow started off at the University of Washington, transferred to Gonzaga, was an All-American. Have you been at Arizona long enough to, to know the difference? Because it seemed like you guys had to sell the top kids on going to Spokane. And I, this year you got Chet Holmgren over there. Last year was Jalen Suggs, but have you? This is Arizona, which, in my opinion, I've been a part of the Pac-12 for 36 years. Post John Wooden, I think Arizona's been. Matt, Matt Milbach's going like this, but I think they've been the premier program in the conference since the Wooden era. But have you had a chance to notice a difference being at Arizona so far? I mean, for sure. I mean, you know, and you know, I'm transitioning as a head coach, so the, the recruiting have I felt like you know kids are just beating down our doors to come there. Not quite yet. You know, I still think we got to get through the NCAA stuff and, and all that stuff's got to kind of shake out. And then, you know, we'll, we'll get on solid footing, you know. So to be honest with you, that that's why, I mean, you talk about you uh, these players you've never heard of. I mean, that's something I take pride in and is the player development piece. And, I mean, hopefully these guys will attest. I mean, we spent a lot of time individually trying to get their games better. I mean, and, and it's uh, it, to, some, to me – I always think I always want to be hedging my bet on recruiting and player development, recruiting and player development. And sometimes, you know, the the best recruits you get are the ones that decide to go somewhere else. And that kid you've been developing in your program ends up being a great player. And, uh, you know, I, I definitely want to continue to do that because I just I think that's the right way to do it. And, um, you know, not to say that you're not going to be out trying to recruit really good kids because you are. But but it's definitely going to be a combination of, of the player development aspect and, um, you know, hopefully recruiting really talented kids that could impact right away. Bruce. Tommy, uh, Bruce over at the Daily Star. I uh, was wondering just how, as this the, the fall has gone on and you've had full-length practice now for a few weeks, how much do you tweak your system? And I don't know if that's something you guys did at Gonzaga with the personnel uh, you know, uh, or if it's pretty much the same. I didn't know, you know, especially these two guys up here, are there certain things they're they're doing or somebody else is doing and, and, and you make some wrinkles? Or is that something that... I mean, I, I think you always want to have a base way you play and within that you, you try to, you know, help guys either develop a skill set that allows them to be successful in that system or, you you know, you, you subtly adjust your system to allow guys to play to their strengths. I mean, I think right now we're still in kind of the the whole part of the teaching, you know, where we're kind of putting in, you know, a, a base set of things and trying to get a lot of things in. And then, um, you know, I think pretty soon here we'll start breaking it down into parts. And, you know, whether that is finding a post package for uh, for Ben, you know, or finding Azulis and elbow isos. I mean, I think all those things are going to come, you know, in, in, in the coming weeks and months. But right now I've just been trying to make sure these guys understand how we how how we want to play, how we want to move, how we want to move the ball, the fundamentals that it takes to play within that system, and um, and we've been hammering home. And these guys have done a great job. I mean, I think they've picked it up really well. And uh, you know, not that things don't need fine tuning, but I mean, um, you know, I feel like we're in a pretty good position. You know, for early October. I mean, ask me that question in a month. I mean, we'll see how I feel. Okay, that's all we have time for. Uh, appreciate you guys being here, and best of luck this season. Thank you.